بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ ملک الحمد کما یم بغی لجلال وجہ کا و عظیم سلطان کا و نسلی و نسلم علی سیدنا و نبینا محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ اجمعین My dear brothers and sisters, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to another episode. This is the final in this series uh, of uh, the grand legal maxims, Al-Qawaid Al-Khams Al-Kubra. We have been discussing the various legal maxims and we continue today the second part of our discussion on the last of the grand maxims, Al-Ada Muhakkama. Today we continue to explain some more details about this Qaeda, its applications and the limitations, examples for the applications and some of the subsidiary rules. And with this, we conclude this series. Later on, we may resume another series on the other al-qawaid al-kulliya, other legal maxims, uh, that's another time, inshallah. So let us study this. Uh, when it comes to urf or ada, uh, it's based, it used to rule on practices in Islam, in the fiqh. Urf and ada is used to rule on practices or of individuals or societies. In regards to issues that are not explicitly mandated by Sharia, as for those that are clearly mandated by Sharia, Urf and Ada cannot be applied because Sharia comes to abrogate them, to cancel them because they are destructive. They do not contribute to human welfare, felicity in this world and the next world. As for those that are not contradicted, where there is no clear mandate from the Sharia, that is the area where orfanada can be considered and the rulings can be made accordingly. Orfanada can restrict the application of textiles also, you know, to qualify, to restrict it, or to enforce some restrictions so that the purpose is to facilitate, you know, ease in the application of the laws and make life smooth because there are different circumstances that we as human beings face and the Sharia comes to bring ease for us. You need Allah God wants ease for you. He doesn't want to impose hardship on you and make life difficult. Urf can be either verbal or practical. It can apply to words that we use, to which we have given some meaning, which may be different from the linguistic meaning. Or Urf can be practical, related to practices. Okay, verbal Urf refers to usage of a word a group of words which may be different from its linguistic meaning or even its meaning in the Quran and the Sunnah. Because there are words used in the Quran in a certain meaning, but the urf comes and gives another meaning to it, in which case, of course, we need to take into account the meaning of that word the Urf has given to that, the shade, the new shade of meaning. An example for this word that has been used in the Quran in one sense, but the Urf uses it in a slightly different sense, qualifying it or restricting it is the word Lahm. The word Lahm means meat. In the Quran, the word applies to meat of animals that we are allowed to eat, it can also apply to fish we catch from the sea or lake. But when it comes to Urf, Urf may exclude fish from it. So in a country, when they use Lahm, 
you know, they mean only the meat of the animals that are slaughtered, not fish. So therefore, because of this change in meaning and the application of the, uh, the connotation of the word lahm, if someone was to, that he would never eat meat. His oath is not broken if he were to eat fish. If in that country, in the usage, laham means doesn't include fish. The oath is not. Another word in the Quran is walad. It includes both sons and daughters, but Urf may use it exclusively for sons, male children. And therefore, if somebody sets aside, something for his wallet, then of course it is, it doesn't include daughters. So strictly it is for the son. Practical orf applies only to universal or widely acceptable practices in a community. An example of practical orf is the practice of dividing mahar, which is uh, the bridal gift that the husband ought to give his wife is mandated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. So there, but there is a practice of dividing it into two types, two installments. One installment is payable at the time of contract and another deferred payable later at the time of divorce or death. So or yes, this is acceptable. Orf can either be universal, applicable to all Muslim countries, or just applicable locally to a specific country or region. An example of a universally applicable orf is Aqadus Salam. This is a type of sale in which the price is paid while the delivery of the good is postponed. This was practiced in Medina. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he migrated to Medina, he allowed it to make life easy, although it goes against the prohibition of sale of goods that is non-existent at the time of contract. Okay, but an exception is made uh, and that is Aqdus Salam. The Uruf, this Uruf is universal to all Muslim countries where they allow this kind of, you know, sale. Example of a local orf is the practice of bearing, you know, some countries when you have that first child, the, the practice is that the feast of Akida, Akika is bore, the cost of it is bore by the maternal grandfather. This is practiced in some countries. So of course it can, you know, in that country, it's applicable, but it is not so in other countries. Another example, according, there is an orf of traders, for example, that if somebody buys something from them, uh, the seller, those who sell that product, they bear the cost of the delivery of the goods. So if that is the orf, and that orf is binding on the people who engage in the trans in that specific country, but it's not applicable to another country where the practice is that the one who purchases must be at the cost of the delivery. ORF can operate in multiple ways within the legal theory. For example, the first example is ORF can qualify a general text. For example, the maintenance of a divorcee, a woman who is divorced, and she's spending time in Idda, of course, it is upon the husband to maintain. He, ha he owes to her maintenance. Now, the amount of this maintenance is left, is not specified in the Quran. Look at the verse in Surah at talaq لِيُنْفِقْ ذُو سَعَاتٍ مِنْ سَعَاتِهِ وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهِ لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا مَا آتَاهَا the wealthy shall spend according to his means, and he whose resources are restricted 
shall spend according to what God has given him. God never burdens a soul beyond what he has given it. God will bring ease after hardship. So the verse mentioned does not specify the amount of maintenance. Instead, it leaves it to the custom to determine. Another, this custom determines the intended meaning where the word may have different linguistic connotations. We have already given the example, the two examples, Laham in the Quran, used for to include all kinds of meat, including fish, and Walad in the Quran used for offspring, male and female, but the orf comes and restricted in the case of Laham. Some countries, laham means just it doesn't include fish. And wala just include only male children. Another example is custom determines the term of the menstrual cycle. You know, when in doubt, refers to our custom. Or also Imam Shafi, he made a stikra, a research about how many days usually women menstruate. But of course, this is not applicable now where scientific knowledge of menstruation is far advanced. So there is no need for us to make this guesswork. Of course, we may have specific information what kind of blood is considered, you know, menstruation and when it is not considered, of course, in that case, we may we have to go by the scientific determination. Otherwise, custom uh, can determine that. Or for custom, however, cannot contradict principles established categorically by the text. For example, if the orf in some countries and cultures is to disinherit females so that no inheritance is given to females, this has been the custom in many countries, even in Arabia when Islam came, Islam came to declare that women have a right to inheritance. Women have the right to own property and things like that. But if the order of one country is, in culture is to disinherit of females, it has no validity in the Sharia and that orf is not taken into account because no one can take away the rights that Allah has given for day, for day. The same applies to custom, you know, some countries and you know, there is the corrupt practice of enforcing dowry due on the uh, woman's family. That when a boy comes to a marriage, they ask how much dowry, you know, they will give this boy. And of course, big, big. And because of this, because such a obscene amount of demand, many women cannot get married. And oftentimes it also leads to all kinds of harm and abuse of women because they produce, they fail to produce that dowry. Islam prohibits that dowry, which is demanded by the husband from the woman and forces the dower, the bridal gift, which is mother, uh, which should be given by the boy to the girl he is marrying. So this kind of practice of dowry you know, is not, cannot be enforced in Sharia. Now, I will finish by mentioning a few subsidiary rules. There are others. There is no need for us to go into all these details. And this will give us uh, a, a picture of what this Al-Ada Mahakkama means. Number one is istemal nasi hujja. Usage of people is a valid proof. For instance, if A asks B to help him in making a deal, and he helped A to make that deal, and it went through, then the B has a right to demand a payment for his service. If the custom dictates, it, if it is the custom in a particular milieu or culture, that anyone who makes a person, for instance, real estate, he, the, the, you ask somebody to make the help him get that deal. The real estate agent had a right to that payment, you know, if that is the custom. Another example, if A hires B to work for a day, 
and you, okay, you will work for a day or a two or three, four days. The time and the work hours are determined by reference to custom. So if he has worked eight hours, A cannot say, I hired you to work one full day and the full day is 12 hours or 24 hours. No, it is determined left to the custom. Again, another work for Mushafs, books and educational materials is valid based on custom, although initially the work is something that is lasting. So an exception now custom comes and yes, yes, you can make a work for books or masahif, educational materials, computers, devices, you can make it a work, even though these things are can perish. They cannot last long. Number two, another rule is original meaning of word, word can be waived in favor of the universal custom against it. For example, if someone knows that he will not eat from a particular tree, although the original meaning is the tree, the metaphorically it means it refers only to the fruit from that tree. So the, even though the original meaning is canceled by the usage, the metaphor, metaphorically, if this statement means that the fruit from that tree. Likewise, someone was never to put his feet in someone's house. It includes if he lands, if he comes there with a with the helicopter and he's sitting in the helicopter inside the house, he did not put his feet inside, still, you know, he has entered the house, even though he, he didn't put his feet inside. And another rule is writing is as valid as oral expression. For instance, if A writes to B, I sell such and such house or property with specifics, and B confirmed the purchase in writing, transaction is complete even though they did not express it verbally. No word, artic verbal articulation is made. If it is everything done in writing and concluded in writing is as valid as an oral ijab and kabul. Yes. Now, another rule, what is known by custom is akin to a contractual obligation. In other words, al maruf urfan kal mashruti shartan. That is the phrasing of it. So, what is known by custom is akin to a contractual obligation. In other words, what is recognized by people in the transactions is considered as binding contracts unless they made an exclusion. If A purchased a merchandise in a country by certain currency from B, B cannot demand payment in another currency. So if it is in India, yeah, he has a right to demand rupees. He cannot say you pay me in Canadian dollars unless at the time of contract, that was the agreed upon. If a father gave his daughter a gift, jahaz, at the time of marriage, while sending her away to husband's house, gave her furniture or whatever, a computer or car, and the later father comes, <coughs> it was given as a loan. Simply, it is not a gift. The dispute must be settled by reference to the custom how the custom, uh, what is the custom in that specific milieu, specific culture. If it is given as a gift, usually, then that custom uh, rules and the father has no right to demand. Finally, rules can change according to circumstances. Tagayyurul futiya bi tagayyuris zamani wal makan. For instance, Initially, paying for religious services was considered undesirable or haram. 
But the custom now, because these services are available and it's often, you know, these services cannot be rendered unless the payments are made because they have to make a living. So paying for religious services of imams, muazzins, teachers of the Quran, marriage officials is allowed by custom. It's the custom has made it, rendered it permissible and that is okay. The Prophet وسلم, initially prohibited writing down traditions because there was a fear of people mixing in the map hadith with the Quran. However, after his death, there is no such fear, so the custom sanctioned it. After the death of the Prophet, they started writing down the traditions, and in this way, hadith was preserved. So, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to enhance our understanding, bless us in our understanding and practice of this beautiful religion. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me if I have made any mistakes in my presentation. I will read this dua kafarat al majlis. I will also request everyone, inshallah, to make you share this beneficial knowledge because by doing so, you will start to gain rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereby, we will join the caravan, the links of the transmission of Islamic knowledge going back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because balligu anni walu aya, transmit this, this uh, knowledge from me, even if it is one aya or one tradition that you can pass on. And inshallah, with this we conclude this series and we may come back with the second part, another part, dealing with al qawari al kulliya and we will announce the time uh, later on, inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Glory and praise be to you, Allah. Because we bear witness there is no God but you. We ask forgiveness of you and return to you in repentance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.